oh, exponent rules. Basically stated, I'm just going to kind of zip through this, especially since we got examples next to it. We got to see yesterday the product of powers, multiplying. You're multiplying, you're going to add the exponents, okay? We talked about that yesterday. If you go power to power, an exponent to an exponent, multiply them together. Because like in the example here, if I have 2 to the 3rd squared, I have 2 to the 3rd. And I have another 2 to the 3rd. 3 plus 3 is also 6. So we can get there a couple of ways. Power of a product. Just kind of distribute that cube through. Or you can do the stuff inside the parentheses. Negative exponents. Oh, I'm going to get hurt later for saying it this way. We flip them. Okay, we take the reciprocal. In other words, if you have a negative exponent, we're never going to have negative exponents in answers. And you want to take care of it. You say, hey, you're acting kind of negative. Maybe with a new environment, you're going to be happier. And you'll be positive. So we flip it down to the denominator, and it becomes positive. That also works the other way around. So like if you had 1 over 4 to the negative third, you also could flip that up to the numerator and get an answer that way. So that's interchangeable depending on where it's at. Um, zero exponent, anything to the zero power is 1. Anything, even... 12xy squared z to the 0 power, it's still 1. <laughs> so be out there and cautious. It doesn't mean it's a to the first. It doesn't mean it's 100 to the first. It's literally 1. Okay? Division, we said, subtract your exponents. Be careful on that as well. You can end up with negative exponents sometimes. And then power of a quotient it goes with power of a product, and then you're just going to distribute that exponent through and then simplify if that's called for. So as we do these, some of them I know we're just going to go to the calculator. And other ones, we're probably going to want to find some different ways of going about it. But we're going to test you out on something right off the bat. 32 to the 0, don't go to your calculator. What is it? 1. Okay. But now, some of this other stuff, it's details. Like here, 15 to the negative first. If I take that 15, take it down to the denominator, it becomes positive 15 to the first. But that negative is lurking. So once I do my flipping, I put the negative back on. Hardy, does it matter if I put the negative up top on the bottom and the front? Nope. As long as you only put it once, you're good. So that's one of those things to kind of keep an eye out for. Three, you have options. I know in the example, we went ahead and distributed. We got 2 squared times 3 squared. But if we kept going with that, so let's say we wanted the answer. We're like, all right, so 4, 3 squared is 9, is 36. I could also, in this case, I could have just done 2 times 3 right back at the start and gotten 6. And 6 squared is 36. So don't be afraid to follow normal add, subtract, multiply, and divide order of operation stuff if you need to make something a little bit simpler. Anything to the first power just gets you the thing back. Nothing fancy there. Again, power properties, the biggest thing people forget on either of these is to do it to the denominator as well, not just the numerator. And it says evaluate, so it doesn't mean leave it as 3 squared over 5 squared. We literally want to get down to an answer. Negative exponents, don't like them. Got to fix them. You're being negative. Flip you down to the denominator. You like it now. Good. 
Well, you don't like hanging out in the denominator now. Okay. We'll flip you up to the numerator. You're good now. You're positive. But Harvey, couldn't I just... Like, why are we going to all this work? Why, why, when I could just put it in my calculator, do this? Legit question. And here's my answer. There will be portions we get to with these exponent rules where there's variables involved. The variables won't go in your calculator. So I want you to think these things through as you go. So when you do run into the variables, it doesn't cause you to get stuck. Now, let me ask a quick question here. What does 7 and 9 have in common? Okay. Okay. Would I go about solving them different ways? Nope. It's the same thing. So either way, and again, I can go to the calculator. Heck. I can go and go to my chart. Hey, check this out. Math. I'm just trying to let you see. There are so many ways to get you to the right place. It's kind of crazy. We just got to pick one. Here, I, I seriously, I don't care if you go to the calculator to help with something like that. Using tools is a legitimate thing. But that's where, again, the practice comes in because then you recognize those tools as you go. You're like, oh, I don't have to deal with all this crazy stuff. It's not going to be as bad as I thought. Hey, look, it's the variables. Here they are. Don't worry. I'm not putting you through 13 more of these. Okay. Simplify the expression. Assume that no variable equals zero. I transfer with positive exponents. So for instance, if I look at this and initially I look and I say, hey, that's, that's the product property. I'm going to add the exponents together. So I add the exponents. Okay, 3 plus 4, 3 plus negative 4, excuse me, is negative 1. But I can't have negative exponents in my answer. And on this one especially, perfect time to mention this. I've got to be cautious if when I do my flipping, it leaves me with nothing, in quotes, in the numerator, You've got to put the one there. Because if you just put fraction bar b to the first or just b to the first, it's not right. So just always be aware when you have fractions, something has to be up top. Otherwise, uh-oh, here comes the details and, and death by a thousand minus one halves. So just saying. I have had people ask me, remember those have ones, easy to forget them. Just go to your like terms and add your exponents. No negative exponents. Nothing else to do. Um, I'm just looking around to see where I see trouble spots. Oh, right there. Okay. All right. When that 4 goes through to the variables and the negative 3, I'm going to do the easy part first, the variables. Power to power, we multiply the exponents. Then we get here. I will see a lot of people write down negative 81. They grab their calculator. We do this. See, Hardy says negative 81, but it's not. Because that quantity is in parentheses, and that quantity in there, anytime you take something to an even power, square it to the fourth, you're going to get a positive number out no matter what. Be careful. Okay, take a little bit of time to make sure that you're on a good front with that. 
Um, I'm looking around. I'm looking for weird stuff. Weird stuff. Weird stuff. Weird stuff. Subtract. 12 minus 15 is negative 3. Nope. We already saw this game get played before. Fix it. Make sure something's left up in the numerator. Uh, oh. Add them up. W to the night. Subtract them. Oh, oh. What's W to the zero equal? One. Don't leave it as W to the zero. Because then I wonder, do they know? Sure. Not sure. The infamous double negative. Negative 4 minus negative 5. But minus a negative is just plus. And it's positive exponent. I don't need to flip anything. I don't need to do anything fancy. Ah! I heard the whispers as soon as I did it. I'm like, Hardy. Hardy. Hardy needs to go back to kindergarten. I forgot the alphabet. Those are different. Let's try that again. Let's try that again. You go to the denominator. You go to the numerator. You are different variables, and I got sucked into that. That's not good. You're right. Different variables can't do that. Oh, dear. Almost made it through the whole way without doing something silly, but <sighs> it happens. And I'm not getting sucked into doing it again on 19. Just asking myself for trouble. All right, let's find a couple that, let's do a couple of the doozies here at the bottom. Uh, ooh, I get coefficients and those. Yeah, this is cool. Let's do this. All right, let's start with the numerator. Negative times negative is positive. Positive times negative is negative. If you notice that right away and you wanted to just put the p to the 8th in the denominator to save yourself space, you can. I'm not because I'm already worried now that I'm going to do something else silly. Okay, that 4. So 2 to the negative 4th. I'm just going to do this for the moment. There's a whole lot going on with that. M to the negative fourth, P to the negative twelfth. Okay, let's clean this up. The only thing that doesn't need cleaning up is that M to the eighth. So let's, all right, so M to the eighth, P to the negative eighth is going down to the denominator to become positive. 2 to the negative 4th is coming up to the numerator. m to the negative 4th is coming up. p to the negative 12th is coming up. So through the power of positivity, we're almost done now. 16's good. Multiplying here, which is add. Subtracting here because of division. Everything's positive. We made it. Terrible. Okay. I can kind of make that work. Again, are there shortcuts? Sure, but I'm not as worried about shortcuts as I am making sure we've got the basics down. So let's get crazy on this last one. Holy moly. All right. One piece at a time. Five to the fourth power is 625. X to the eighth. Y to the twelfth. Okay, everything positive there. That was nice. Then... Now, here's an interesting situation. So let me get my x to the 18th here first. So I look at this. There's a couple of ways I could handle this. 
Here's the way I'm going to choose to go about it. You could go ahead and distribute here. So x to the fourth, y to the fourth, then do the negative three. That's my suggestion. You could multiply those right away and then distribute as well. They're both perfectly legal. But for our circumstance here, I'm going to take one extra step and simplify it this way. Just because when you're looking at it later, I want you to be able to see where the heck that came from. And that one step that takes us an extra, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds, I think is worth it. Okay. Are we completely out of the woods yet? Not 100%. I've still got these. If you don't want to rewrite everything and you're like, Hardy, can we just like x to the 12th, y to the 12th, and zap those? Sure. Otherwise, you could subtract exponents and deal with the negative. That's fine, too. This is, this is going to be just a game of, of patience. So let's see what we got here. So up here, I got 8, 26, 38. Okay. Y to the 12th over Y to the 12th. But 12 minus 12 is 0. And we know anything to the 0 is 1. So that just went away. And we made it. We made it. We made it. Hallelujah. Okay. So. Nothing real long. Nothing real bad. It's just, can I stay patient enough to make sure that the details get done? So couple of suggestions to throw your way. If you have somehow left some of the practice stuff from the first couple of days, you're probably going to have some extra time. I'd go back and do it. Odds are more than enough here. I mean, they're quick, but you're going to get hit with every possible dealio here as you're going between five and six. If you whip through and you're doing the edge like, I got this, I'm not worried about it, okay, go back, make sure things are going well, or if you're feeling that good about things, not saying go crazy, but start to peek at the quiz preview so you know what you're getting into as we get towards Friday, because that way you're ready to ask good questions Friday and be really, really prepared for this quiz 